The Someone You Should Know podcast with Rick Anthony, sponsored by Summarize. Repurpose podcast, webinars, and interviews for social media, websites, and email with the help of AI, all thanks to the help of Summarize. Hi, I'm Rick Anthony, and welcome to the Someone You Should Know podcast, the podcast that focuses on musicians, authors, and interesting people. We like to say we're making a difference one artist at a time. So sit back, have a cold one, and get ready to meet someone you should know. Father's Day is fastly approaching, and I wish all the amazing dads out there a very special day. I want to start this episode by asking a question. Raise your hand if you remember the song Unchained Melody. Well, of course you do. You probably remember the Righteous Brothers version of it. It was a big hit back in the movie Ghost. Now, let's back up 30 years prior to that to the singer who had it as a top six song on the Billboard Pop Singles chart and a number one song on the R&B chart. That song, of course, is Unchained Melody. And the man behind it is the late Roy Hamilton Sr. Well, his music is alive and well, thanks to his son, who happens to be on my podcast today. Will you please welcome the very talented Roy Hamilton Jr. Roy, welcome aboard. Happy Father's Day. Oh, thanks, Rick. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you. I really and truly uh, loved your dad's music and really look forward to doing this particular thing because you're doing a special tribute for Father's Day we're going to talk later in the episode about, okay? But you yourself, a seasoned performer who sings all types of uh, all different genres, R&B, jazz, soul, pop, contemporary, inspirational, gospel, big band. You probably do some tube and throat singing, too, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on, uh, <laughs> but growing since this is Father's Day weekend, growing up, what do you remember about your dad's music and his career? Well, so you know what? I remember everything about my dad and his career. For one thing, that first song he recorded in 1954, You'll Never Walk Alone. Okay, so that song yeah. was the one that really put him on the map. And it actually blossomed into one of the one of the one of one of the greatest inspirational songs in that era. Mm-hmm. And um it actually got to be where the um the National Football League in um in Liverpool used it for their anthem. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't for my father's um original recording that um Jerry and the pacemakers picked it up. And uh, he, they re-recorded it, but they, it was inspired because of my dad. Famous celebrities stop by or anything like that? Anything that, you, that uh, you remember when you were uh, young? Every now and then, you know, they'd have uh, someone knock at the door, open up the door, and it's, you know, uh, Quincy Jones. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was one of those guys. You know? <laughs> but I remember, you know, meeting a lot of the entertainers back in the day, you That's know, uh, like James Brown. and. <laughs> And, Gay and and um Dion Warwick, you know, yeah. who actually used to do background vocals for my for my dad. You're kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Sissy Houston and Dion Warwick and wow. uh, yeah, yeah, all the, the ladies from back in the day, um um Gladys Knight. Oh uh-huh. uh, one with my father. And uh, those are some of the people that uh used to, they come by the house and everything, Ruth Brown, you know. And another amazing artist that I worked mm-hmm. with my dad and, and um, um, her and my dad became good friends now through the years. So, yeah, it's been it's been a wonderful um, experience, you know, um, you know, that that, you know, being you know, the son of a legend, you know, uh-huh. it, you know really. Yeah, it's got to be it's got to be kind of humbling to, to see that because, you know, your dad impacted a lot of people while he was on this earth making great music. What would you say would be the best piece of advice your dad ever gave you? It could be music related or anything else. He said to take care of my mom. Okay. That was one of the, uh, I remember he said, take care of mommy when he go on the road. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was like, okay, dad. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many siblings do you have, Roy? Well, let's see. I have, um, well, my father married for, uh, a, a woman uh, before he married my mom, and uh, he had four children. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, they all passed. Um, but my mother, uh, his second marriage, uh, it was two of us. Okay, two of you. Myself and Roy, I mean, Ray and uh, Ray Ray, and myself. Um, yeah, so it was it for, for my good. mother. Very good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, it's talking about your career now. You've, you performed uh, at an early age and started headlining shows in Vegas. 
Mm-hmm. Any any particular milestones in your career that really kind of say like, wow, I actually did that. That was really cool. What would you say would be like maybe your oh wow moment? Oh wow. Well, I'd like to shout out to my lovely wife and manager Maria. She has been with me for forty four years. That's and awesome. We started out together, you know, on this quest not only to um, to get my dad into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but also. Uh, work on my career as an entertainer. Uh-huh. So d- down through the years, um, you know, she encouraged me to sing my dad's music more. You know, because you know, usually when you're you know a singer, you have to sing everything popular and this and that's going on here. I'm going to sing this and I'm going to sing that. But the songs that I I began listening to a long time from the time I was little, and I began to sing you know sing those songs. And we actually got to the point where, you know, I was able to, you know, in, interpret it as best as I could, you know, in, in, in the way that I heard my father sing. Uh-huh. So we began to, um, to do this production. It was called um, uh, Roy Hamilton Jr. The Legacy Continues, which me and my That's wife right. produced it. Uh, and we, we decided to bring the show here to Vegas and that's where we launched it. Well, awesome, awesome. Now, you've got a, a recent album, features some great music like Butterfly and Man Up in the Sky, It's Me. And one song we're going to feature, which is next, is 1,000 Ways. I really and truly think that this should be part of everyone's wedding from this point forward because it's it's talking about the thousand ways of love and such. Uh, the backstory on it. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was inspired by my, my wife. She inspired me, and I decided to... Uh, you know, to write it about, about our relationship. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, I love, I love love songs. I love to, mm-hmm. to sing and perform love songs. You know, I'm not too particular about singing the blues, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so, and that's the reason, you know, that song came about. I think a lot of people are singing the blues because they don't have a great wife like you do. To Maria, we're going to go ahead and salute Maria with this great song. Here's 1,000 Ways from Roy Hamilton Jr. on the Someone You Should Know podcast.
What a great song right there. 1,000 Ways from Roy Hamilton Jr. Roy is my guest on this episode of the Summon You Should Know podcast. Got some great music from him coming up in a bit. But before we get into that, I want to say thanks so much for tuning in to the Summon You Should Know podcast. We're available on the World Wide Web at summonyoushouldknowpodcast.com. If you go there, you're going to find our recent episodes, our archive of more than uh, 170 episodes, recent news, a whole lot more. And if you happen to be visiting, we invite you to leave us a review. Now, according to Buzzsprout, the service that shares us to all the streaming platforms around the world, my goodness gracious, the good Lord has blessed us also. 2,200 cities in 90 countries around the world. And a couple of new cities on the list. We want to say hi to Tinley Park, Illinois, Delray Beach, Florida, Bolivar, Ohio, and also Sao Paulo, Brazil. The Somebody You Should Know podcast heard wherever quality streaming audio is available. Hi, it's Rick again for Summarize. Summarize repurposes your content from audio and video into engaging, shareable social posts, email content, summaries, quotes, and more. Hey, it's hard work to create high-quality content from podcasts and video content. Summarize gives you multiple types of content to support your marketing channels, from social media posts and email newsletters to show summaries and a whole lot more. As a matter of fact, if you go there today, you can upload up to 60 minutes for free and find out why I like it so much. Go to Summarize.com to learn more. That's S-U-M-M-A-R-A-I-Z-E.com. Thanks for listening, and now back to our podcast. We're talking to Roy Hamilton Jr., who has a very special show Dedicated to his father called A Tribute to Roy Golden Boy Hamilton. We'll be talking about that in just a bit. Get your pens and pencils ready for that one because I know you want to get tickets to that, okay? Uh, I have to ask you uh, first, Roy, before we get into that and, and some more music, I wanted to find out, you were involved in Standing Ovation. You had a cameo appearance in that. And uh, also you were involved in a documentary called The Rebirth of the King. Can you tell us about those particular moments? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, we had a... A place down in, um, in in New Jersey, and we launched it. Um, and we were approached by um, you know the music. I mean the uh, rec- the produ- producer of that movie, and he they wanted to do the film it right there at our place. You know we were you know um, had a nightclub there on Summers Point. So we um, you know they decided to re- you know, do the movie at our place, and it was like it was wonderful. And also they offered me a. Uh, a part in the movie cool. as the, you know, as, you know, I'm this, uh, the like a bartender serving, you know, serving, you know, fruit punch and, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, stuff to, uh, the, to the kids. And I was really, I was really excited about doing that. Um, uh, it was amazing. Um, the, the movie was fantastic, you know, standing ovation. Um, it was, uh, it was supposed to slated to be a Disney movie. Uh, it's like they did it, you know, uh, independently, mm-hmm. but it was an amazing movie. Uh, and um, also, I think it was um, it was another movie that that uh, that uh, came out of that place as well down through the years. Um, it was something like Footloose. Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> very yeah. good, very good. Yeah. All about you know, uh, you know that area wasn't really you know you, you know they didn't want you to dance and this and that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah it was. Um, Oh man, it was so, so many. So it was a very historic, historic site there. Awesome, very good. Now you're currently the headmaster and vocal coach at the Roy Hamilton School of Voice. How does it feel to mentor the next generation of performers and maybe the next Roy Hamilton? Well, um, it's an amazing uh, thing to, for one thing, to help you know to um, help to, you know the upcoming artists you know with their projects is what I do. Also vocal coaching to help, help them uh, develop their own style of the way they sing and uh, of music. I um, think that uh, it's really an honor to be able to at least give them um, encouragement and support as well as um, good advice on, you know, how to perform, where they're going, you know. And I also like to uh, shout out and thank my my oldest son, uh, Roy Hamilton III, who also uh, ins- inspired me to uh, to launch that. Wonderful, wonderful! My goodness, just a musical family. Very, I just, I just love that. That's so nice to hear. Uh, another song we're going to feature is actually a cover of your dad's "Don't Let Go" from 1958. It was a. I like your version. I really and truly like your version. Can you tell us about this classic and why you decided to cover this song from your dad? Um, it's it's a great tune. Um, you know, it was my dad's. Uh, one of like one of five uh, biggest hits 
Um, um, he uh, he charted that song. I, I always think that, uh, I mean, it's just this inspiring song, and that's one of the songs that we're actually trying to get him inducted into the Rock Roll okay. Hall of Fame mm-hmm. for. Um, it was a crossover hit. It was uh, was a rock and roll as well as R&B song. Um, just recently, um, Beyonce used it in a, one of the feature on her newest movie, uh, uh, um, Cowboy Carter, uh-huh. and it, uh, it, she sampled a, a portion of that song. Awesome. Very good. Very good. And I remember from uh, 1979 was covered by Isaac Hayes. That was one of my favorite songs during the disco era. But uh, here we go. We're going to hear uh, Roy Hamilton Jr.'s version of his dad's Don't Let Go right now on the Someone You Should Know podcast. Hear that whistle at 10 o'clock. Come on, baby, it's time to rock. Yeah. I'm so happy I Hamilton Jr. covering his father's 1958 hit, Don't Let Go. You know, it's, it's really strange. Growing up, I, I really and truly loved the music of the 50s and 60s. I think I missed a generation. My brother grew up. He was, uh, he was born in, in 1944. So, you know, he was right off part of the whole, the inception of the rock and roll era and everything like that. And all the great music yeah. of the 50s and 60s were, were in his wheelhouse the entire time. This next mm-hmm. feature is called Tales from the Road, Roy. It is... Uh, Kind of the thing we really love love to do with musicians because we, you know, you got a lot of great days. Everything goes really perfect, but sometimes you have those days where things didn't go quite as planned. Uh, kind yeah. of think, think, kind of think of the movie Spinal Tap. But uh, if there are any particular uh, moments in uh, either your touring or your setup or doing a gig or something like that where things didn't go quite as planned, and you can laugh about it now. Well, I, I think pretty much. I think everything 
usually goes as planned, you know, and um, I'm glad to say that we haven't had any really mishaps or anything <laughs> except for the pandemic that just stopped everybody here in Las Vegas. And it was like, you know, it was like the day the earth stood still. So that was one of the things that really just stopped everything and, uh, you know, just put everything on the back burner. Now, you got this special show happening Father's Day weekend, Father's Day weekend in Las Vegas. And it's a collaboration with Benedito King, the son of Ben E. King. How did you coordinate this with, with him? Well, first, let me shout out to Benedito King and his lovely wife, Kim. Good. To see, you know, I'm glad y'all tuned in. I'm sure they're listening. <laughs> And uh, yeah, well, you know, we were working, um, we're doing our show and this and that and everything, but then we were also approached uh, by the other, you know, Benedito and uh, a lot of the other Sons of Soul Legends. And we, they wanted to collaborate and we wanted to get together and do this this great show. So um, my wife, Maria, and myself, we uh, we decided to spearhead the whole, you know, show. And, um, and we... You know, we we in constant uh, communication with Benedito and his lovely wife Kim, and uh, we decided, well, you know, we're going to do this. You know, we we're representing our dad. You know, as his dad uh, with um, "Stand by Me" mm-hmm. and his famous songs in uh, Spanish Harlem and 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 so many other uh, great songs, as well as my dad, my my dad's music, "Unchained Melody," "Don't Let Go," "Hurt," uh, "Ebb Tide." Uh, you never walk alone. Uh, don't let go, and all the other great songs. So we said, well, you know what? Let's let's co- collaborate and put it together. And uh, we wanted to use a couple of the other guys, you know, but um, you know that we that we met, you know. And I said, okay, well, well, let's try to get it done. So we, uh, Maria and, and myself, we, uh, you know, we put together the production and everything, and we're going to do it on Father's Day uh, weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we you know, and uh, we also got an additional uh, artist, and his name is Elvis Aaron Presley Jr. I mentioned that because he's an addition to our our um, show, so it's going to be rock and roll and soul sons sons of legends. Oh my God, that's going to be a great day of music. As a matter oh, yeah. of fact, if you'd like to get tickets to this event, go down to the show notes. Go down to the show notes. We've got all the information, all your ticketing information. We got a couple. We got a couple more minutes left on the show here. I I wanted to get some final thoughts. Something else that fans might like to know about your father, but they might not already know, or maybe you. Well, I think that um, it's just it's just been an honor to uh, to be uh, a part of you know my dad's life. You know, um, I've only only knew him for seven years out of out of my life, but um, it just was, you know, just an honor to, to know that he was like one of the greatest singers in that era, Mm -hmm. you know, he, uh, he brought so much joy, you know, and, uh, inspired so many as well as Elvis Presley. Um, uh, he, uh, my Elvis Presley, uh, he, he mimicked my father. He idolized my dad Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, he, you know, he, 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 uh, he was, you know, my, he was very inspired by my father, you know, they became good friends. Um, you know, um, they, they, uh, they worked together at Chips Mormon Studios down in Memphis, you know, and, um, yeah, my father, uh, actually, uh, was invited to Graceland Mansion and, uh, he, uh, he was showed all, you know, the, the, the whole mansion and the rooms and, and everything. And, and him and Elvis became good friends. Awesome. I love stories like that. And I was a big Elvis fan and Elvis Aaron Presley Jr. is doing a very nice job of his dad's stuff. And Benedito King's going to be involved with this thing, too, man. I'm going to have to get some tickets and and head on out there to go see you. We're going to wrap up the show with a medley of Roy Hamilton Jr.'s songs. This is uh, is actually taken from a video, and uh, I'm going to post that also in the show notes there. But this is just going to be some of the songs that uh, Roy Hamilton Jr. is paying homage to his father with, uh, Roy Hamilton Sr. Roy, it has been a wonderful time talking with you. I wish you again Happy Father's Day. I hope this thing is an absolute sellout this Father's Day weekend i know everybody who's going is going to have a great time and and god bless you for uh, following your dad's work and just keeping it alive so none of us forget about it uh, god bless you too rick i appreciate you um thanks to all the fans out there to you know keep listening to my dad roy hamilton we have a website roy to and we have a um 
a, a petition that we're trying to uh, circulate to get him inducted. So if you go to our website, RoyHamilton.com, and we have a little, you know, uh, icon thing there and just, just uh, click it and uh, you can go right to the petition and just sign it to help get him into the Rocker Hall of Fame. Hi, this is Rick Anthony thanking you again for listening to this episode of Someone You Should Know. Now, if you're an aspiring musician or an established musician that's looking for a little exposure, I invite you to drop us a line at someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. That's someone you should know podcast at gmail.com. Also, I invite you to tell a friend about the Someone You Should Know podcast. I thank you for tuning in this time and I invite you to check us out next time on the Someone You Should Know podcast, because you never know who's going to show up. Until next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I.